Hashem Naseh Benatzliach, Shir Torah, Bukhim Abayim. So uh, there's a lot to say, there's a lot to do. Uh, you know, the uh, the news keeps coming, but, you know, from all different sources, from private sources, from public sources. And it's interesting um, that in this week's parasha, in this week's parasha, parashat Matot, Matot Maaseh, it's two parasha week. In the uh, first paragraph, in uh, chapter in the book of Numbers, chapter 30, um, verse number 3, uh, says, That a, uh, the people that a person, if a man will take a vow to Hashem and swear on oath to establish a prohibition upon himself, he shall not desecrate his word. According to whatever comes from his mouth, he shall do. Uh, the last part that is what I read in Hebrew. Um, from here we learn that the uh, things that a person says, things that a person says, hold a lot of weight in Shemaim. Whatever you say, you have to do it. You have to do it. Now, interestingly, we all know that sometimes we talk uh, nonsense. We talk nonsense. We say things that uh, are incorrect. We sometimes say things that are uh, deceitful, sometimes outright lies. We say things that are wrong. And uh, for this we pray. For this we pray every single day at the, uh, at the end of Amidah. The end of Amidah says, Eloi netzor leshoni mira, v'siftotai medaber mirma that after everything we've prayed in Amidah, after at the end, right before you say, you take the three steps back and you say, Oseh Shalom Yimomav, there's a whole paragraph, there's a whole paragraph that's a uh, custom is of, is of Israel to do it, where you uh, say to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, my God, please guard my tongue from evil. Netzol Eshoni Mira. And my lips from speaking deceitfully. Here we see that speaking evil and speaking deceitfully are two different things. And you're asking HaKadosh Baruch Hu to protect you from both. Now lying, cheating, things of that nature, that's not so hard to, uh, uh, to explain, not so hard to understand. But what about speaking evil? What about speaking evil? A lot of people speak evil, so much so that we have to pray for it three times a day. Asking a Kadosh Baruch Hu to please help us from speaking evil? Well, let's see. If you noticed, Rabotai, and I promise you the shiur is not going to be about them, but just to notice a point, um, all of the people that, uh, these Rashaim that we've exposed over the years, uh, whether it was Goldberg or Manus Friedman or Mervis or most, uh, you know, uh, most recently uh, Asher Meza, uh, Generally speaking, the one common denominator among all of them, aside from their deceit and their Lashon Ara and their uh, all types of heresy and so on, some common denominator that perhaps some of you were clever enough to notice is that after we exposed all of the skeletons that they were hiding in their closets, in their lectures, where some of their uh, videos would be good, but inside each video there would be some form of heresy. Uh, generally speaking, it wasn't the whole thing that was bad. It was usually, you know, a few moments within, some more, some less. Some are experts at it, so like Manus Friedman, that uh, literally uh, every other sentence is, uh, is, is something uh, problematic. But nonetheless, it looks great for most people that don't know the difference between what is the Torah and what is philosophy of, of, of his mind. But nonetheless, the one thing that I've noticed is that after we've exposed each one of them, they all got worse. Meaning, their heresy and their just manic behavior and antithetical to, uh, 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 to the Torah type of behavior got much worse after we exposed them. Now you would say, well, so, so maybe you shouldn't expose people because they're getting worse. Opposite. Opposite. Why? The Torah is compared to, by the sages, as an analogy, they're compared to water. Now, if you live in Florida where it rains simply like half the year here, or at least it seems like it, um, 
you notice that it rains and what happens when it rains all of the creatures come out the worms come out of the ground the frogs the toads you have like a little uh jungle outside of your door in every house doesn't matter if you're living in the uh the Boca Raton or in Cooper City or in Hollywood everywhere there's all these little creatures come out and uh and have a good time but only after it rains you're not going to see the worm hanging out in a you know scorching sun it'll die same thing with the frog and the toads and so on you're not going to see them but when it rains and there's a lot of rain all of these creatures come out the Torah is the same thing once you show the truth of Torah those that are real those that are real hold on to it whereas those that are fakers they're heretics and so on all of their heresy all of their worms all of their ma- uh, spiritual maggots come out all of their frog beliefs come out and they show you who they really are and most uh, 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 uh things you just ask yourself you ask yourself and i used to ask myself this in the past is it better or is it worse the reason why it's better and my rod told me it's better to do it is because this is actually what am israel did to deal with christianity christianity which uh surely started uh you know many many years after jesus actually died uh and uh the people that wrote the new testament perhaps you know didn't even know who he was never saw him or anything like that disagreed with each other it was started with a bunch of ignorance and uh and uh, uh illiterate people but at least you know they got themselves a crowd they got themselves a crowd sort of like the crowd some of these other Rishayim get people that are ignorant and you know are easy to pick on easy to take advantage of easy to fool and what ends up happening is that in the beginning of Christianity because there was you know before Christianity there was Judaism and then there was paganism that's it there wasn't like other things so then Christianity is born you know Islam is born many hundred years later I think something like uh, 600 years later or so so you have paganism praying to statues praying to the sun praying to uh you know people praying all types of stupid things and then you have Judaism the truth that's always been but now you have Christianity which claims that they're praying to a God the same God but also there's a man and also there's some type of ghost perhaps this ghost will be in a movie a couple of thousand years later and you know and 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 going to Hollywood not really sure who this ghost is and how he comes about but nonetheless you have this little ghosty thingy and you have this guy that looks like a rock star and you have supposedly the same God of Israel now because the people that they started it with were ignoramuses illiterates who could not check anything for themselves they simply relied on the teacher you know uh, really much like most people today they rely on the teacher so they couldn't verify true not true and and in reality what ended up happening is that people still felt that they were being Jewish they just had an additional savior an additional helper a middleman even though this is against the foundation of Judaism they didn't know enough about Judaism despite being Jewish to know that this is wrong and what ended up happening is that Christianity at its birth was very very similar to Judaism they kept the Sabbath they kept uh, Kashrut they kept a lot of the laws only later on did this change where the uh the uh they changed the Pope changed it to uh uh uh, from Shabbat to Sunday and no more kosher and completely abandoning uh, all of the laws of the Torah and now they say listen we don't uh, uh need to abide by the uh Ten Commandments we need to com- uh, abide by something more difficult what we need to be moral people it's more the most ridiculous thing in the world we have you know we have to believe in Yoshke and we have to be moral people uh and uh that's much harder than keeping the Ten Commandments which breaks up into 613. obviously only somebody that's you know spiritually sick actually believes this is more this is better or this is true but nonetheless there's a lot of people unfortunately that think this and we cry for those people too to 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 wake up and see the truth but nonetheless at birth of Christianity the original Christians were Jews and those Christians looked like Jews acted like Jews and it created a problem so the Chachamim 
had to decide what are we going to do because you have a couple of you know bad people starting this whole thing and it's causing some decent people to fall prey to it because they don't know the difference so they decide to take one of the chachamim it ended up eventually being two and go and infiltrate into the christian world and do all types of things necessary to get them to follow you and one of the chachamim did it uh you know uh, later on he'll be called paul and he did uh, uh, uh some miracles uh in order to uh fool them into thinking that he's the continuation of jesus and once they adopted this whole thing once they followed him as the new leader as the new connection if you will to jesus and so on his number one job was to make christianity as different from judaism as possible hence the reason changing it from you know from shabbat saturday to sunday you know eliminating the law and 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 uh, and so on and so forth so the whole thing of 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 exposing the truth is not so easy it's not so easy because you have to make sure that people know enough to to follow along and if they if they can't follow along you have to sometimes take extreme measures in order to make sure that they do follow along that they do follow along because they can see the difference the difference is more clear and that's what happened with christianity and uh, obviously today no one is mistaken uh, the vast majority of christianity for judaism until recent last several decades where the christians have a new trick up their sleeve and they started this thing called messianic judaism which is 100 percent christianity but nonetheless the the uh the uh the ignoramuses of the world will fall prey to it to a certain extent and believe that they're jewish even though they're 100 percent not jewish now and also believe that the word messiah in christianity or so-called messianic judaism has the same definition as messiah in judaism uh you know which is although it's the same word at two different completely two different uh definitions to us messiah means a human being that hashem sends to the world that uh and it's a regular human being born from, from a man and a woman uh not a man and a man and not some ghost and not some uh nothing just a regular typical man as far as flesh and blood who is very very righteous uh some chachamim says even a a baal tshuva but the point being is is that this man eventually uh discovers himself when hashem uh sanctifies him and uh instills certain uh, supernatural powers into him as it says in jeremiah and also in uh, uh the other prophets discuss it how he's going to be able to you know smell the sins of man and kill people with his words do all types of things that are supernatural and uh but this has to be done first by a prophet and the prophet that will do this and uh, is is going to be a uh Eliyahu Navi, who never died and uh now this messiah who's hashem is going to make him a king in this world is a human it's not a supernatural uh you know being of of, of a divine of any kind he's a human being and he's the highest level of human being aside from Moses Moses is still higher than him and the Kabbalists say that the his neshama is this has the spark not the whole neshama or even half but the spark of King David and Moses in him so there's certain uh, uh Kabbalistic teachings that talk about the uh the uh, neshama of the uh of the Messiah but nonetheless everyone agrees this is a normal human being loves the Torah righteous uh zealous for Hashem and so on Messiah in in in, in Messianic Judaism i.e Christianity is another word for God that's what it means according to their testament anyone that's a Christian is a Christian because of the New Testament and the New Testament says that Jesus is part of God or is God or whatever some you know idolatrous belief they have that's why we consider it idolatry and the Rambam Paskins that Christianity is 100% idolatry 
now so when a person is unaware of this they think oh what's the big deal if i believe that uh, jesus is the messiah you know what's the you know just like some uh, chabadniks believe that uh, the lubavitch rebbe Allah shalom is also the messiah and some other people believe other people are the messiah isn't it all the same thing no it's not the same thing it's not the same thing they're all wrong but nonetheless it's not the same thing why because the messiah in christianity is another word for god this is a fact it's not a uh, uh a opinion it's a fact it's in their new testament it's in their book if your friend that's a christian or family member that's a christian believes that yoshke was not god then he doesn't believe in the new testament he has a different religion he has a different religion so if you already have a different religion why don't you just adopt judaism completely and abandon idolatry altogether not really understanding why people do that but nonetheless sometimes people get you know hung on specific things but the key is is that we know as Jews what is the foundation of Judaism based on our Torah and the works of our sages and so on and in the Christian world they know more or less their uh the, you know their uh foundational beliefs if you will is is really predominantly based on you know believing in Yoshke and that he's going to simply uh allow you to make every single crime under the sun as long as you believe in him you'll be saved somehow uh so in essence it's an open ticket to criminality but that's unfortunately their beliefs but it's important that there people know that there's a difference with the wicked people that we've exposed in the beginning when we first exposed them it was very hard for people to tell the difference why because he's a rabbi or holds himself as a rabbi because that's the title that is that that is there before his name and he's a rabbi because that's the title before his name he speaks about Judaism and he speaks about Judaism he covers his head and he covers his head he uh uh you know says that uh, Judaism is great and he says Judaism is great he says God is one he says God is one and so on and so forth so on the surface it looks the same but that's why it needed to be exposed because when we showed the different clips of different forms of heresies that these people talked about and so on people started noticing oh okay there's there's a problem there's a problem or maybe it's taking out of contest and some people would be uh, uh uh detailed enough to actually go see the entire video and see the truth and see that the clip is actually an understatement they're actually much worse than what we said and uh but they didn't even have to do that why because these people after we've exposed them the more effective it was the more the worse they got the worse their foreign beliefs got the more uh adamant they were about their foreign beliefs and this happened again with Asher Meza which uh just literally in the last 24 hours uh made a video wrote comments and uh stated this a couple of times I'm not sure if he stated it in the past also I doubt it but he outright says there is no consequence for not keeping Torah if you don't live in Israel meaning according to Asher Meza's religion it's not Judaism he just calls it Judaism just like the Christians call the Messiah you know God and God Messiah and, and we call Messiah Messiah is a human being same thing with uh, with, with Meza he says that according to him and there is no source on planet earth that will ever say such a thing other than him that you don't need to keep the Torah and the mitzvot in the Galut he says you should but you don't have to and there's no consequence whatsoever of not keeping the Torah and the Galut the Torah doesn't mention any it wasn't part of the agreement according to him all you have to worry about is ethics God holds ethics God holds uh, people accountable uh in regards to head ethics now who defines ethics maybe Mesa does uh maybe his friends do at the Freemasons uh, or perhaps the Proud Boys or or maybe his uh, bike club not really sure who holds the ethics committee uh haven't been notified yet but nonetheless he says Torah is only for people that live in Israel which means that according to him all of the Jews that live outside of Israel including himself can desecrate Shabbat can uh, eat tarif can simply do whatever they want marry non-Jews they can do whatever they want according to him these are his words apparently he skipped the blessing in Amidah that says 
guard my tongue from evil my lips from speaking deceitfully because he did both and both of those things but he's not the only one there's a wicked evil evil man that is in the Israeli government the finance minister named Avigdo Lieberman who is Safek Jewish I'm not really sure if he's even Jewish I highly doubt he is but has declared an outright war against the religious Jews to the extent that he said that he wants to throw all of the uh, religious Jews into the ocean similar to what the uh Palestinians say uh has campaigns when he was running for prime minister that were very very similar statements to Hitler Adolf Hitler the Nazi that you know annihilated six million Jews and he has this hatred for Jews that is unlike pretty much anybody else even the Arabs don't hate us as much as this guy does uh, perhaps it's the verse that the Prophet says your conquerors your destroyers will come from within you is being fulfilled by Lieberman and his friends but much more with him today was announced this finance minister Lieberman is taking a, uh, another shot at the religious community where it bothered him that uh, some of the uh, religious people study Torah for a living and only one uh, one of the parents one of the spouses works and yet they get a financial financial incentive from the government like many other people where that they take advantage of which is that there is a daycare service that they get three hundred dollars a month for three hundred dollars a month for anyone that lives on planet earth is not much money not in Israel not in America perhaps it's worth more in Israel than it is in America but either way it's not worth much nonetheless he's bothered that this family that only one parent works gets 300 bucks a month from the uh, from the government for daycare and now he's making 18,000 and some say 24,000 families simply either decide that the husband is going to leave the kolel stop learning Torah or give up on the 300 bucks a month now all of the other parents that are not religious the Arabs everybody else no that's not on his agenda he doesn't care about them in fact he gives them much more money the government gives them a lot more money but his focus has always been about the religious people and many people that are ignorant and that are full of hatred for the Torah and for Hashem and for rules usually jump to the conclusion that the religious people are you know feeding off of the uh, of the government they're milking everybody they don't work they don't do anything and so on and so forth and one of the main people that does this is Lieberman but the truth is very very different than the words in a uh, several uh, lectures videos that were published by Rabbi Zemir Cohen and Hida Brut, uh, articles uh, online by uh, news uh, networks and so on they've actually reported the actual real numbers the government reports the numbers and so on now most people don't necessarily read this stuff either because they're not financially savvy they're not interested they don't have time so most people are falling for the false words of Lieberman and the people like him that say that the religious people don't work and they milk the government and they take advantage of them and uh they uh this and they that when the truth is not only that this but it's actually the opposite meaning that the secular world especially in Israel benefits a lot more from the religious people then the religious people benefit from them and I'm not talking about spiritually of how the whole country exists just because of the religious people learning to lie and so on that's obviously a uh, a completely different issue I'm talking about money I spent almost 20 years on Wall Street I don't believe anybody can really debate me in the issues of money and finance and things of that nature I spent a lot of time doing a lot of big work I did something around a billion dollars in transactions over my career billion dollars is a lot of money so 
I think I know a few things about companies, about reading balance sheets and so on and so forth. And the beautiful part is, this is not even something that requires an expert. This just requires a brain that works. Let's see what the truth really is. Lieberman says that giving a religious person 300 bucks a month is killing the government. Killing the government. He has to stop it. And the vast majority of these 20,000 or so families will have to stop getting this financial incentive if they want the husband to continue learning to walk. Only something around 10% of them are both parents are working. So he has an argument here that, see, look, only one parent is working. Uh, the other one is milking off of the government, right? Let's see. Statistics that came out from the Israeli government itself reported that in, the, in, the, in Israel, 78% of the secular people work versus in the Haredi world, religious world, 61% work. Meaning, we're not talking about 0% work. In fact, we're not even talking about a significant difference. We're talking about a 17% difference. 78% of secular, 61% of Haredi. Now, this 17% is not a big difference, but it's actually even smaller than you can imagine. And the reason why is because out of all of Israel, according to their statistics, only 12%, only 12% of the population are actually Haredim, religious Jews. 12%. 70% are secular 21 percent are arabs so you have yourself almost 70 percent are secular 21 percent are arabs meaning that there's more arabs than there are religious people so this 17 percent is not like millions and millions and millions of people if let's say there's you know 10 million people 10 million people that are in Israel, together, 1.2 million are religious. That's it. And out of that 1.2 million, 17% are not working. Now, they are working, they're learning Torah, but they're not working in a traditional economy of, of commerce and uh, lawyers and doctors and so on and so on. 17%. So you're talking about, rough F estimate, let's call it 200,000 people. That's it. The whole craziness of billions of dollars and, 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 and anarchy in the entire country is over a couple of hundred thousand people. Less than 2% of the entire population. He's saying that 2% of the entire population is killing the other 98%. Let's see if they are. Let's see if they are. Now, if you really look at the religious community, you'll find that most of them work well over half like I said, 61%. And 100% of all of the religious people pay the same exact sales tax as the secular people, which is 18% approximately. Which means that half of the taxes that the government gets comes from sales tax. Half of the taxes. All the taxes they get comes from sales tax. Both religious, non-religious pay the same exact 18% tax. You go to the store to, to go buy some candy, to go buy bread, to go buy, uh, you know, uh, anything, a house, to go anything, you are paying a sales tax. That sales tax, everybody pays the same thing. Just because you have a coupon or you don't have a coupon, the store doesn't change the price because of you. You want to buy a car, you want to buy a computer, you want to buy anything, paying the same sales tax. That's half the taxes. It's half the taxes. Which again, we go back to our 200,000 people. 200,000 people, they're still paying the same sales tax as everybody else because they still have to eat, they still have to drink. Whether or they not they, they join uh, the corporate world, they still have to pay the same sales tax. So already we see the numbers are skewed into a sense of trying to put a brand of evil on the wrong party here. Second, the ones that do work, what do they do? They sell books. What are they? They, uh, they, they only uh, deal with religious people? Absolutely not. You'll see businessmen. 
some of them even billionaires you'll see lawyers doctors accountants bus drivers store owners entrepreneurs in technology all types of things teachers now further you'll see that 95 percent 95 percent of all of the taxes coming into israel half of it like i said is coming from sales tax the other half is other types of taxes but out of that entire hundred percent 95 percent of it comes from the top 30 percent of the population while the rest the five percent of the population a uh, five percent of the uh taxes comes from the lower 70 percent again showing that the uh the vast majority of people 70 percent of the population are not really responsible for most of the income of the government anyway whether they're secular or arab or, or religious they're only contributing five percent of the total taxes for the for the entire country even if they are working or not working which again shows that these 200,000 people at best they're responsible for a microcosmic percent of a percent of the actual taxes or, or the the effect on the economy altogether as far as better you know as far as uh, taxes and so on and so forth okay fine now Lieberman and his friends claim that they're spending not just money on these daycare programs but they're spending countless money on the Torah institutions let's see how much do they spend on all of the institutions in regards to general culture not Torah related the government spends 900 million shekels per year of which five percent goes to anything related to Judaism some you know uh, 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 religious some not religious some are uh, uh, things that are not uh, have nothing to do with the Haredi community but out of the total of 900 million five percent goes to Jewish culture an insignificant inconsequential number what about the yeshivot because they're complaining well they're they're giving a lot of money to yeshivot they're uh, they're destroying the economy these yeshivot we have to these kolels these this these that okay let's see a a uh, higher education budget in Israel is nine billion shekels nine billion shekels a year which is for two hundred thousand students this seems like small numbers in comparison to people in America and other countries but this is Israel it's not such a big country nine billion budget somewhere around three billion dollars or so are spent on higher education which is for two hundred thousand students now a secular student that wants to get higher education costs the government fifty thousand shekels per year for the three-year program meaning for him to complete or for her to complete this higher education program will cost the government 150,000 shekels or approximately fifty thousand dollars so if he wants to learn the uh the uh, uh the history of Rome the uh the dress that the queen in, in uh, of uh, of Greece or perhaps maybe the shoe sizes of the you know the leaders of China three thousand years ago he could learn it and it'll cost the government 150,000 shekels for him to complete this entire program 150,000 shekels a yeshiva bachu doesn't cost 50,000 shekels a year or 150,000 dollars 150,000 shekels to complete the program but rather 2880 dollars meaning less than 3,000 shekels a year less than a thousand dollars a year is what a yeshiva bahu cost the government in comparison to fifty thousand so over three years a yeshiva bahu will get a total of almost nine thousand shekels about three thousand dollars less than three thousand dollars secular learning about dinosaurs that we came from monkeys 
amoebas are going to run over the world and aliens he gets 150,000 what about the Avrechim that they complain about that don't join the army and so on and so forth how much did they get 5,160 per year which means Rabotai, that what a Avrech will get in three years I'm sorry what a secular student learning about China will get in three years 150,000 shekels will take an avrech an adult that has a family 30 years to get 30 years to get versus three years that's the reality these are the numbers published by the government so it doesn't bother Lieberman and the lefty liberals that to learn about China and amoebas and the uh, world came from nothing is going to cost them 150,000 shekels even if that student is an Arab terrorist that's eventually going to kill Jews they're also going to spend 150,000 shekels on him even if he's some Christian that decided to move to Eretz Israel they're also going to pay 150,000 shekels for him but Chash Shalom, he's a religious Jew no 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 not only we're not going to pay him 150,000 shekels for for him to learn but quite the opposite we're going to do everything in our power to cancel that 5,000 shekels that he gets per year the thousand fifteen hundred dollars that he gets per year it bothers the government too much it's killing the society now the truth is what happens to the society as a result of the religious people versus the secular people what are the results now of course we can say that the religious people are better people they're more moral they're more righteous they're more giving we could say all of that but you may not want to believe why because you're going to say that uh, I'm biased and you're right I am biased but let's look at the numbers the numbers say Rabotai that show us where morals are be, you know simply by looking at the prisons who ends up in prison simple who ends up in prison the more moral you are less likely you are to end up in prison if you teach your kid that he has to honor his parents and it's an obligation from God if you teach your kid that he's not even allowed to sit in his father's chair if you teach your kid that he has to be giving and he has to love other Jews and he has to help and he has to be polite and he has to uh you know uh, be afraid of God and not make certain sins versus if you teach your kid do whatever you want just don't get caught go play video games that kill people that's not such a problem it's not nothing wrong with it if you steal just make sure you don't get caught if you uh want to uh, act like husband and wife with somebody else's daughter go ahead and do it it's a cute thing we like to see 12 year olds have babies even though you're gonna abandon her two minutes after you had your pleasure and so on and so forth you see it if you want to do some drugs listen just don't do too much you don't die because it's going to cost us a lot of money to bury you if you want to sell drugs sell it for a good price you have a lot of customers in essence the education is a little bit different not all secular people think that way but nonetheless that's the actual results whether they are educated that way by their parents or by society that's the actual results how do I know that's results out of three and a half billion shekels that are spent on the prison system in Israel who are the ones that are benefiting the most it surely isn't the religious people why 64.5 64.5 percent of the inmates are secular people 33 percent are Arabs we are now at 97.5 percent only 2.2 percent only 2.2 percent of all of the inmates in prisons are Haredi people which means that while you may may want to complain that out of the three and a half billion dollars a billion shekels 70 million is going to the religious people you can't really claim that why because over two billion goes to the religious to the secular and over a billion over a billion goes to the Arabs you're going to complain about 70 million I don't think so especially since you're doing society a favor by removing these Arabs and these criminals from society now 
That's one way to show who's more moral. Another way is to see what we spend our time. Where, where is the money of the government going? The government spent 94.9 million on theater, 79.5 million on movies, 64.9 million on music, 10.5 million on Arab culture, 9.8 to learn different types of skills. 4.9 million was a specific course about plastic. You want to learn diff- about different types of plastics? Government's willing to pay and does pay almost 5 million shekels a year just for you to go learn about these plastic. Eh, it's a useful talent. Uh, you, maybe you can make a career out of it. We have to spend money on it. After all, the government does get all this money from taxes. 5 million for plastic, 9.8 million for different skills. Arab culture, I mean, that must be important in a Jewish country. Over 10 million goes to the Arab culture. Music, who doesn't like music? 60.9 million. Movies, of course you want to destroy your neshama and watch a lot of movies. Almost 80 million. And theater, and uh, it's 95 million. Right. How much on Torah institutions? All of the yeshivot, the budget for all of the yeshivot, the kolos and everything. How much did they get? Do we get 90 million like the theater? Do we get 80 million like the movies? Perhaps we get 65 million like the music. Or maybe like the Arabs at least. So we're equal with the Arabs. They get 10 and a half million. We should get 10 and a half million at the very least. Even though it's a Jewish country, we should at the very least get just as much for Judaism and Torah as the Arabs that are trying to kill you. You would think, but that means that you're actually trying to make sense of the whole thing. It doesn't make sense. Why? The government is run by enemies of the Torah. Whether it was a Vigdor Lieberman or Lapid or Naftali Bennett or it was the one before them, uh, the uh, Netanyahu, that everyone thought he was Messiah, but in reality he's more close to the Messiah of the Christians than he is the Messiah of the Jews. Why? The budget for Torah institutions in total, 8.3 million. That means, Rabotai, that all of the Torah institutions in Israel in total get 8.3 million. We get just a little bit more than plastic less than any other skill less than the arabs not even 10 percent not even 10 percent of what they spend on theater approximately 10 percent of what they spend on music and a little bit more than that than they spent on movies 8.3 million we're talking about three million dollars in so many words one rich guy and not even that rich in america or anywhere else can actually outfund all of the government expenses that israel cries about and lieberman and lapid and and all of the other shine cry about torah institutions one rich guy throws a few million dollars to israel finish we don't need the government anymore i don't know why people haven't done this already now surely you do know that a lot of money for torah institutions is not coming from the government it's come from both rich and poor people statistically speaking over 90 percent over 90 percent of adults 20 years and over 20 years old and over in the religious community donate money in comparison to secular only 63 percent only 63 percent of adults 20 years and older that are secular donate money to any cause to zoo to anything but Haredi community since it's part of our Torah over 90 percent donate money what are they donating the money for is this donations only benefiting the religious community let's see Haredi organizations non-profit organizations such as Atzala that is an organization that has expanded and has saved lives both Jewish and not Jewish not just in Israel, but in America and other places, saves the government hundreds of millions of dollars. Organization like Yad Sarah, providing different types of medical supplies and all types of services that really the government is supposed to uh, uh, supply. They do it, not for profit, not for fees, saving the government at least $1.4 billion per year 1.4 billion meaning 
they save the government by themselves more than the entire budget that is spent on a religious community. Ezra Marpe, which is uh, Rav Firer, the genius that has helped countless people, on an average about 100,000 people have helped saving lives, religious, not religious, doesn't make a difference. They don't tell you, listen, we're only going to help you if you wear a kippah. We're only going to help you if you're a... Uh, uh, you know, if you love God. No, if even if you hate God and you're lefty liberal, you call Rafiqa, he's going to help you. Saving the government somewhere in the neighborhood of $100 million a year. By himself, just his organization. All of these organizations are run by religious people. Most of them funded by religious people. And yet, people have the audacity to complain about how we're taking from the government? When was the last time Atzala asked anybody if they're religious or not? I'll tell you, never. When was the last time any of the organizations that's providing literally tons and tons of food to poor people asked them if they're religious or not? Never. Our 20, 10,000 people that we've already fed this year in Israel were on pace to feed almost 20,000 people this year. We try to cater to religious people, but we don't ask them if they're not religious. They still get food. If they have a health issue, we still help. And we're not even based in Israel. Literally, the amount of money that the religious community contributes to society in Israel and other places far, far surpasses any type of financial benefit that any government, including America, including Israel, and combining them, could ever offer them in return. The problem is, Rabotai, is that sometimes there are certain people in the religious community they make a mistake which we're all judged for. They take advantage of programs for, the, for their own greed, even if they don't need to. Whether it's welfare or getting different money for their schools and different types of things that are simply not necessary. The smartest community in America, in my opinion, is the Satmer community. Not because they have the most amount of scholars, I have no way of knowing that. Not because they have the greatest Yilat Shemayim, also I have no way of knowing that. Surely they're righteous people, decent people, and so on. But for sure they're the smartest. How do I know? They don't use any government money. Not in Israel, not in America, not at all. And that's the reason their schools, their yeshivot, have never been threatened. But yet, modern Orthodox and other Chabad and other types of religious yeshivot in America and in Israel are literally threatened. Threatened to get shut down every other day by some type of villain from somewhere. If we simply just stop taking government money, stop it. It's not even that much to begin with. There is a way to do it. That's why one of our ambitions, one of our dreams, and if you say Hashem, if you say Hashem, the goal is for us to open a yeshiva that will not only accept all of these Jewish kids and, 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 and make sure that they do tshuva and their family does tshuva and they have to be serious about it, but it's not going to be based on money. You know what it's going to be based on? Do you want to serve Hashem or not? One of the main things we're going to have, we're not going to take any government money. And even more so, one of our greatest ambitions is not even to take money from the people either. To make it 100% donor funded. If you have money and you happen to also attend the school, maybe you should donate if you can. You don't want to, don't. Similar to our organization, Bezot Hashem. We don't ask people for donations. As much as people think we're after money, I've never had a conversation with any one person about money. When people ask me, listen, can I call you about money? Can I want to donate? I say, I'm sorry, you can just donate online. No, but I don't want to talk about it. There's nothing for me to talk about money. You want to talk, it's an assistant. She'll process your, your donation if you'd like. No, but I want to talk. I don't talk about money. Why? It's simple. I talked about money for 20 years. I have no interest in talking about money. I'm not going to convince you to donate. It will never be. Why? No interest in doing it. No motivation to do it. Simply thinking that they're believing that there's more downside than upside in doing it. 
if the rest of the leaders in the Jewish community would do the same, we'd have extraordinary results. Why? People like Lieberman will no longer be able to have any power over us. Now, of course, that's going to have to require all of the people that are doing better than others to contribute a lot more and not wait for someone to knock on your door and say, oh, listen, we're raising some money for somebody that's sick. We're raising some money for yeshiva. Don't wait for the calls. You have money. Go find a place to donate to. Just like you found a second house to buy. Just like you found a vacation to go to. Just like you found a, another piece of jewelry you don't need. Go find a place that qualifies to, to, to fit your agenda of what you want. To help in the Torah world. And go do it. Stop waiting for people to ask you to donate. And if you have a lot of money. Stop buying more businesses. Stop buying more toys. Go publicize the Torah. Save the Torah world from these reshaim. That's in reality one of the things that people need to do today. Why? Because so long as we take a single penny, a single penny from the secular world, we will always be at their mercy. Even if it's not logical, even if it's outright evil, even if it's outright wrong, where they take a lot more from us money-wise, Billions and billions of dollars are taken from the religious people by the secular world much more than we can ever imagine. The amount of benefit that the religious community gets from any government is literally a microcosm in comparison to the amount of benefits and money that the world gets or the country gets or the local community gets from those very same religious people or their friends or their family. If anybody would just simply look at the actual numbers, you would see it's literally an embarrassment for anyone to say this with a straight face that the religious community at large is benefiting from people in any way, shape, or form. Surely you're always going to find a few mooches here and there that take advantage when they don't need to, take a welfare check even if they live in a million-dollar mansion, take a government uh, assistance even though they're the ones that should be assisting the world. Surely you're always going to find some clown that does this, but you're also going to find a bunch of those in a secular world. And a lot more in a secular world. Hence the reason why over two billion dollars is spent on keeping those secular people in jail. Perhaps if they increase the budget to five billion, maybe they could get them out of jail and, re- and, and actually to do tshuva by instituting programs like Rav Grossman's program that's been going on for the last 30 years. Notably the best jail program in the history of mankind, where literally the success rate of the prisoners that go to his program, Rav Grossman's program, and learn Torah every single day with the rabbi that they assign. Literally, the success ratio is out of this world. These people, not only they don't go back to jail, not only they don't go back to jail, they become a positive influence in society. Was that started by a secular person? Absolutely not. Can it be started by a secular person? Absolutely not. Why? You have to have Torah. The amount of benefit that the secular world gets from the Torah world is literally unbelievable. For any of these clowns to say that we, as religious people, are benefiting from them, it's really a rebuke from Shemaim. Why? We're not helping each other enough. If we were helping each other enough, some of the rich people here in America, in Spain, in Venezuela, in in, in the UK, in in, uh, Australia, all over the world some of these rich people would literally stop looking forward being the best person or the highest person on the forbes 500 list write a few hundred million dollar checks to different major institutions with a condition you are never allowed to get any 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 government assistance you need something you call me that's what we should do you have money help people but If we don't, the Torah will continue being burned in public. Hashem's name will continue being desecrated on a regular basis. And the religious people will continue looking like they're all homeless, miserable people that cannot help themselves get out of their own way. When the truth is quite the opposite. 
the contribution that the religious people make to society, especially to the secular world, is so extraordinary that it truly should be embarrassing for anyone to even think that they've ever helped one religious person in their life as much as that religious person helped you. Why? That's what it says. That's what it says in the Torah. A person that helps someone that's learning Torah, he is the one that's praiseworthy. Why is he praiseworthy? Because he's the one that gets all the, all the benefits. He's the one that gets the benefits. The helper gets the benefits. Not the helped. That avrech that you just donated a few thousand dollars for, he would have gotten it anyway from somewhere else. Like, Kadosh Baruch who's the one that runs the world, not you. You chose to be the vessel that Hashem used. For that we should all pray for every single day that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will use us as vessels to help the Torah get bigger, to help Kiruv, to help the poor, to help Hashem's name be glorified in every Jewish household and even non-Jewish household, to eliminate idolatry, to eliminate any falsehood, to eliminate all these lefty liberal communists. Do that. Pray for that. Pray that HaKadosh Baruch Hu use you as a vessel to do such great things. And don't for a second think that he can't do it without you or that person that you help wouldn't have gotten it otherwise. When a person understands divine providence, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu b'chvodo b'atzmo, him himself is the one that is taking care of the pockets and the bank accounts of every single creature on planet Earth. The ant or the Arab, the secular Jew, or the religious Jew, the poor person, or the multi-billionaire. HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself is the one that decides how many dollars are going to be in their pocket, how many dollars they're going to make, how many dollars they're going to lose, how much they're going to spend on things they want, and how much they're going to spend on things they don't want. When a person understands all of these things, and even further, understands the actual mechanics of things, the real numbers, you should know that to be a Jew today, to be a Jew that's a religious Jew today, is something you should be more proud of than any other time in history. Because for you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, not only created the world, but he keeps the world going. But if that's not enough, it's because of you that many people in society are still alive, still able to eat, still can actually make it to the hospital in time, still can learn Torah freely, both financially and with the freedom. The amount of benefit that the religious community gives to the world is literally unmeasurable. And those that do it for the sake of heaven know this. They may not publicize it. They may not even understand the, 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 the extraordinary impact they have on the world as much as they do. But it is true. And it is a fact. And for a person to be a proud religious Jew today should be easy why you are the number one resource in the economic world both the spiritual and literally the physical and if you know that then it'll make it much easier for you to help others do the same because once you're proud of who you are you already become allergic you already become a uh, um something that everybody else wants to be like you become a uh, something that other people can catch on what is that called like when uh, something is a uh, uh, infectious but in a positive way i think there's a different world too but nonetheless you guys get the point if a if a person knows who they are they know how much good they bring to the world then it makes it easier for them to help entice other people do the, to do the same thing. If we were truly proud of who we are, and we truly understood how much good we bring to the world as religious Jews, not just as Jews, as religious Jews, then we would also have the confidence 
to stop taking any benefit from any foreign government, any Christian organization that's full of idolatry, any Zionistic and uh, uh, heretical government or institution. We simply have the Emuna and HaKadosh Baruch Hu that just like he allowed us to survive while destroying all of our enemies throughout all of the generations. And not only survive, he allowed us to prosper. Surely he will allow us to do it if we do even more for the sake of his name. If each one of us starts acting like a proud Jew, we can in itself do a lot more Kiruv, do a lot more Torah, do a lot more good in the world. Because now that you're proud of it, you're no longer hiding it, no longer sticking your head under some type of pillow as soon as some article comes out. You're no longer uh, you know, embarrassed to have a conversation. You're no longer defensive. You simply know where you stand. If a person knows where they stand and they know that they are the ones that have the truth, the debate was already won. There's no point to have the debate anymore. You know you have the truth. What's the debate? Who has time for entertainment? Perhaps those people that get $80 million a year from the Israeli government have time for entertainment. But usually the more productive people in society don't have much time for that. They're too busy producing good. Let's produce good in the name of the Torah and Be'ezrat Hashem sanctify Kadosh Baruch Hu's name with only His hand to help us. כחלק מהפעילות שלי בארגון בעזרת השם, הגענו לכאן לבית חולים לשמח ילדה מתוקה בת שבע. זאת ילדה של משפחה שאנחנו עוזרים לה מדי חג בסל מזון וגם מדי שבת, לפעמים אנחנו גם עוזרים להם, הרב ירון דואג להם. ושמענו שהילדה מאוד רוצה לחגוג יום הולדת ולהורים יש קושי לחגוג עקב המצב הכלכלי. היום בבוקר אשפזו את הילדה המתוקה הזאת עקב דלקת ריאות ואנחנו רוצים לשמח אותה, הרופאים הבטיחו לה שעד יום שלישי הקרוב היא משתחררת מבית החולים. לכן אני רוצה להודות לארגון בעזרת השם, לרב ירון, לרב כחלון, לרבנית כחלון, שאני שליחה ופעילה ומשמחת את המשפחות האלה בזכות הרבנים הקדושים האלה, בזכות בורא עולם ובזכות התורמים. תודה רבה, ואנחנו הולכים לשמח אותה עד לב השמיים. הנה אנחנו כאן חוגגים יום הולדת, ולא רק יום הולדת, גם מסיבת הודיה לילדה המתוקה הזאת. והאימא כאן איתי, והיא רוצה לספר את גודל הנס שקרה, אבל כמעט זה לא קרה, השם ישמור לא עלינו. והאימא פה איתי רוצה לספר. פשוט יש לה אסמה כרונית כבר כמה שנים, וממש תפס אותה באמצע הלילה, ממש קוצר נשימה. ממש בקושי נשמה לי והייתי צריכה להזמין אמבולנס וממש היא הייתה עם... היא הייתה אפילו בתוך אמבולנס עד שהיא הגיעה לבית חולים עם בלון חמצן ממש המצב שהיה ממש לא טוב מה רופאים אמרו שזה ממש היה הצלת חיים ו... מה הרופא אמר? שבעצם אם הייתם מפספסים... אם היינו מתקשרים יותר מאוחר זה היה יכול להיגרם במצב יותר טוב והיא הייתה 24 שעות עם בלון חמצן ממש היה אסור להוציא לה את זה אז הנה היום אנחנו כאן לחגוג יום הולדת שבע נכון, שרה יקרה? מודה גם לקדוש ברוך הוא ששמר עלייך. איך המודה, היא מתרגשת. השם ביום ההולדת ישמור את איתה Thank you. 
Virtus.